Chief Olusegun Obasanjo is at it again. The former military and civilian leader is famously known as a serial letter writer who has been, you know, indulging in all kinds of sensational letter writing. And for some time now, most of us were beginning to think that this picked up hobby of his has probably finally been rested only for us to wake up on the first day of the year 1st January 2023 Sunday to be precise to a letter written by this geratory president general as I would like to call him advising all Nigerians by saying my appeal to all Nigerians, particularly the young Nigerians, on who they should vote for, and then ended up endorsing the candidacy of um, the Labour presidential flag bearer, Mr. Peter Obi. In fact, it threw me into the conundrum of trying to you know, um, etch out a particular topic for this video. I was playing around with so many topics, to so many headings. I didn't quite, I wasn't quite comfortable with so many of them. And then I decided to narrow it down to this particular one that our President General of Nigeria, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, I call him President General of Nigeria, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, is at it again. Chief Obasanjo went ahead to uh, describe Mr. Peter B as his mentee who has an edge over other presidential candidates. In fact, he went ahead to describe Mr. Peter B in terms of knowledge, discipline, vitality, and character. Of course, as should be expected, this has generated varied reactions from different political divides and many dismissing this as worthless and of no political value. And up to now, he still believes that his own period as the president of Nigeria um, was better than what is... Um, is um, the, the, the people who took over from him are done. And that is why you see him keep writing letters. His belief is that after he left office, all those that have been taking over, that took over from him and have been running the country have not been able to do it to his own satisfaction. The APC and the PDP are just being political. And of course, you understand their position. It is difficult to say Obasanjo's opinion is irrelevant in Nigeria. <laughs> if the opinion is not relevant, why did the candidates of these parties go to him to solicit support? For him to make such a statement when he is above 80 years, you can see that it came with a lot of introspection. Because at that age, according to J. Clark or Edwin Clark, the nonagenarian, he said at that age you have gotten your body pass. So there is really nothing that you are looking forward to when you are a statesman except the beauty, the progress of your country. And we can see the beauty of Obasanjo's endorsement on his reasons for the endorsement, which he espoused in the acronym TVCP, track record of ability and performance, looking at the past, antecedent, then vision that is authentic, reliable, and visionary looking at the future then character 
and abilities of a child of God and obedience to God, looking at integrity. Okay. Uh, in a democracy, everyone is entitled to his opinion. No matter how popular or popular, you just have to give them that inalienable right, which is guaranteed by the constitution of the country. But uh, looking at the politics of A, just like the other man said, as a father figure, as an elder statesman who has been so privileged in this country to govern twice, one expects that uh, he will play the father figure role, which will make him to see the country more from a better perspective to guide all the candidates, knowing full well that your choice might not necessarily become the president, and so you have to make sure that whoever becomes, they need that your moral support, they need that your father figure back in and all of that to move the country forward. I think leaders like Koba Sanjo, IBB, Absalami, Tiwa Danjuma, Yakubu Gowan, they, 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 they should be the, a reservoir of knowledge for all candidates who are buying for position. You made about uh, visiting Koba Sanjo and seeking his endorsement. It has become traditional in Nigeria these days to so just visit past presidents who are considered as elder statesmen as a mark of respect when you want to run for president. It's just a mark of respect when you visit them. People visit IBB, of course, you know, Hilltop has become like, you know, a Mecca. You know, they visit Abdul Salam Abu Bakr. They visit Jonathan, of course, you know. Um, and then it's this, that same, you know, um, itinerary that takes them to people like um, Obas and Joe. It's not that people go to actively seek an endorsement to, to win elections. So I want you to put that in a proper context, really. He had this problem with his um, puppets he put in government then, which was um, Jonathan. Jonathan, he was unpicked. Jonathan was unpicked by him. And he felt that Jonathan was not doing his bidding. And then, of course, you know, it became very disruptive. Now, uh, my views on this, I um, we all know who General Olusegun Basinjo is um, after serving out this term. And we even know how that even ended because after constitutionally is allowed to um, go for just two terms of four, four years each, uh, making it eight years. So we <laughs> we were in this country where and the um, former president uh, wanted to elongate and he was looking for and tenor elongation and then in order for him to achieve that um he started um you know playing politics i mean it's 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 no secret it's an open secret that um, he bribed the national assembly so that he will be allowed so that the um, constitution will be amended for to pave way for him to uh, you know succeed in his third term be but of course from what the then um, Senate President and um, I think Inamani, Ken, Ken Inamani said that of course it, it, it actually weighed on his conscience and then um, he couldn't um, allow that happen and so he had to truncate that very third term deal. The story of what happened with the third term saga has been told by many people. Now it's time for me to tell the story. During the debate on the third term B of President Obasanjo, I weighed these two competing concepts of the role of a legislator. I decided to marry the two concepts. I wanted senators to vote their mind on the question of whether to amend the constitution to allow President Obasanjo a third term. This has indeed dented. This has indeed dented his moral integrity because, and he's the same man that said. Um, election was a do or die affair. The same person, election was a do or die affair. So it's um, I, I I I don't understand why someone who <laughs> who is a creator of the problem and suddenly coming coming back to be the problem solver. I don't understand that. You are the creator of this problem. Yeah, and then today you want to you want to present yourself as the problem solver. How is this ever going to work? And then you keep writing letters upon letters, indicting people, and when the most of these leaders that he keeps indicting in his letters haven't done one tenth of what um, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo did as the president of this country. We all know what he did as the president of this country. So 
this is how much that we know of um, Obasanjo himself, you know, General Obasanjo himself. It's, um, he has an inordinate desire for power. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to see, <laughs> he does not want to be seen as um, someone who is not playing the political game. So we're shocked when um, I don't know why what informed his opinion to want to stay back from the political scene when he said he was he was tired of um, partisan politics and then he stayed back and even I mean what a, what a dramatic exit I mean we all saw what he did he even tore his membership card his PDP membership card and said he wasn't he wasn't interested in in you know in partisan politics. And then one would have thought that um, after taking that decision, that um, Chibo Lushego Basinjo would just sit back, just like um, the likes of um, um, General Yakubu Gowon, uh, Abdul Salam Abubakar, IBB, you know, who are just, you know, retired, you know, who are not retired and just keeping quiet and playing the statemanship, you know, role in, you know, in terms of advisory capacity, advising, and then. One would have thought that um, Chibo Basinjo, after making that kind of dramatic exit by tearing openly, tearing the uh, his membership card with the PDP, that was actually indeed signing off from partisan politics. But of course, no. <laughs> Chibo Chibo Basinjo is not is not the type to stay back out of politics and keep quiet. So, but we have seen how he's, he, uh, he has made his home a maker of some sort where every presidential um, candidate will go to pay homage to him and then um, um, seeking his um, blessing as, as it were if they want to. <laughs> In fact, it, 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 most people will see that as being partisan. Most people will see that as being partisan even though he has told us that he is no longer interested in politics. In partisan politics which of course is not true because all what he has done so far is get himself embroiled in all kinds of um, political controversies which I feel um, someone of his status sh shouldn't get involved in things like that so that's just my my take on this this is where I draw the curtain for today Thank you for finding the time to watch my video. But before I finally sign off, I want to leave you with the words of Aristotle that says, it is only a beast or a non-human that wouldn't be interested in politics. 25th February is just around the corner. So get your PVC ready. And then, because we should stop the why do we even continue to applaud and share these cesspools of deceits whose only track record is to hold us ransom and make us continue to be a dystopia nation? We need to end that now. Elect that leader that in whom that in whom you trust, and then you believe will take us to our El Dorado will take us away from these uh, economic woes where we're being rated uh, and the, head, the headquarter of poverty, where we're being called a shithole. So we need that leader that will, in fact, give us, you know, a fresh of breath here. And that's the leader we have to vote for come 2023. If you like my video, if you like the contents of this video, please do give it a thumbs up, strike on that notification bell so that you get to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Leave your comments down below and do not forget to subscribe to this channel. See you pretty soon. Peace out.